Good morning, Delta. Miss Sarah and baby James are here. And we are going to read you the book, Peter Rabbit. Are you ready? I know that you've made bunny ears already, maybe. And that Miss Sam has posted a few stories. Are you excited? Okay. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said Mrs. Old Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Ooh. Now run along and don't get into any mischief. I am going out. See all the rabbits with their mom? Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down to the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. Now that was the one place that mom said, please don't go. So Peter does not have his listening ears on. Okay, push back so we can finish. First, he ate some lettuce and some French beans, and then he ate some radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But round the end of a cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Hey, they can't see the pictures. You sit right here. Oh no, so he ran into Mr. McGregor. <laughs> Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbage, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving and calling out, Stop, thief! Peter was most dreadfully frightened. That means he was very, very, very scared. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe among the potatoes. My goodness, we lost his shoes. Do rabbits wear shoes in real life? But in this story, Peter has shoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster so that he might have gotten, got away altogether if he had not unfortunately run into the gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. Do bunnies wear jackets? No, not real bunnies, but Peter does. Peter gave himself up for lost and s sit right here. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears. So he cried big giant tears. But his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. I know you want to read, but I'm trying to show our friends from Delta too. Can you sit back a little bit? Mr. McGregor came, with, came up and he intended to pop upon the top of Peter. But Peter wiggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind. So now he's lost both of his shoes and his jacket. Peter rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not, if it had, not had so much water in it. Now he's all wet. James, come on. Sit back, please. But Mr. McGregor was after him in no time and tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of the window, upsetting three plants. So he knocked over three big plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. So he gave up. He was tired of chasing Peter. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright. So he was so afraid he was shaking. 
and he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp from sitting in that can, so he was a little wet still. After a time, he began to wonder about going lippity-lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. He found a door in the wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer, because we don't talk with our mouth full, right? It's not safe. She only shook her head at Peter. Peter began to cry. Oh no. He should have listened to his mother, right? And not gone into Mr. McGregor's garden. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to the pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was, starting, was staring at a goldfish. She sat very, very still. But now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. I bet a cat would love to chase a rabbit. So that was a smart decision by Peter. He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a horse. Scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes. But presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was towards Peter, and beyond him was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight walk behind some black curtain bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the woods outside the garden. Phew. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. So Mr. McGregor kept, kept his shoes and kept his jacket. But I don't think Peter minded because he just wanted to get away. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him until he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His uh, mother was busy cooking and she wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost. Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea and she gave him a dose and gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoon to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. Because Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail, they listened with those big rabbit ears, right? They listened to their mom. James Joseph. The end. <sighs> I hope you guys enjoyed the book and I hope that you guys have fun making your rabbit ears. We're going to make some right after this. We miss you guys. We hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And we'll see you next week with more videos. Bye. You say goodbye? He says goodbye. <laughs>